Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. fans oh look at that colin has joined us already on this beautifully warm and a hot night when people should be out and about enjoying themselves and instead they're in here Ange, Ange is second on the list this time look at that, we have six people already well people are hanging out for us they've got the air conditioners on they're inside their houses having a good time now i've got to say up front very quickly it is so warm. I've actually got my front door opening. So if you're hearing noises coming through the microphone, it's not my tummy. It is actually stuff outside. So there you go. Might even be like the Mr. Whippy coming down the street at some point. So <laughs> there you go. All right, dude. Uh, guess what? It is all over to you. So away you go, sir. Well, this is not going to be the mega talk of, of yesteryear like the other ones have been. This is a little bit smaller, but it's still going to be something a little different. Now, for those of you who are old enough to remember, Toll Toys. Toll Toys was a distribution and manufacturing company back uh, in the day, and I'll go through that in just one second. For those who watched uh, Most Icely Monthly, I went through the specifics of most of the Star Wars Toll Toys range. Now, I'm only going to do a little bit tonight, but I'm going to cover off everything else. A lot of stuff you may have seen. Uh, there's a few things that you may not have. I didn't know about them. Uh, there's a expert. Uh, I'll call him an expert. His name's Will. Uh, and I've stolen a lot from his uh, web page without realizing it <laughs> until a few weeks ago when I spoke to, spoke to someone else who was talking to Will on the phone and said, oh, please there. And I went, sorry, Will, I didn't realize it was your stuff on the web page that I stole them, so bad luck, I'm using it anyway. So Toll Toys was a company, uh, Australian Toll Toys Price Limited, manufactured and distributed a wide range of licensed and original toys, games and models in New Zealand uh, and Australia over a number of decades. Uh, the basic history was Alex Tolmer and Associates uh, turned the company into Toll Toys. So Tolmer Toys, that's where the name Toll Toys comes from. Uh, you then have uh, the history of it changing. Uh, General Mills purchased Kenner products. Toll Toys sells 75% of its business to General Mills uh, in the USA. Toll Toys becomes fully owned subsidiary of Sorry, dude, I'm just going to stop you for a second. Uh, can you turn your speakers down a little bit, please? Apparently, according to Andrew, you're echoing, so which means you're getting feedback through your system. So, All right. I can't hear it, but thanks, Ange. Um, then Toll Toys becomes a fully owned subsidiary of General Mills. In 1976, the World Games Company Limited formed and registered. Uh, in January of 77, uh, Toll Toys New Zealand incorporated in New Zealand. Um, then General Mills and General Mills and there we go. Uh, General Mills separates separates out Kenner Toys, Kenner Parker Toys, uh, Inc. as a division. Uh, 1987, Tonka Corporation purchases Kenner Parker Toys, Inc. from General Mills and recognises, reorganises it into the Kenner Products Operating Division. And 1990, Toll Toys New Zealand is dissolved as a company. So there's a whole bunch of companies that sort of work in there. Kenner, for those who might remember, were also part of the Star Wars figures. They also do a lot of other things. Um, Tonka trucks, Tonka toys, they were around for a long, long time. You know, the big yellow metal trucks and toys that you could smash around and didn't seem to be destroyed by anything. Uh, they were also around here. Uh, in 91, Hasbro. Now Hasbro has taken over the, the reins of all the Star Wars action figures. They buy out Tonka Corporation. Milton Bradley, you might remember that name. They did all the games. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but they did. Hasbro restructures to form the Hasbro Toy Group in 1994 and the Hasbro Games Group. In Feb 1995, the company initially known as Alex Tolmer and Associates undergoes a name change to become Hasbro Australia Limited, which remains currently registered and operating under that name as a subsidiary base of US-based Hasbro Inc. 1995, Star Wars action figures are reborn under the Kenner name. Uh, 1996, Hasbro New Zealand Limited removed from the New Zealand company's register. And in 2000, Hasbro closes Kenner. Star Wars products live under the Hasbro brand and they have ever since. So if you've got any toys, any action figures from Star Wars, action figures from, from that era that have Kenner on them, you're very, very lucky. If they're still carded, you could be very, very wealthy. And I'll get to that shortly. Now, for those of you who lived around Australia, uh, this may or may not be of interest. For those who lived in Victoria, their head office was in Knoxville. 
So around the corner from where Daggy is right now and just down the road from where I was growing up. Uh, and you can see from the other states where they were if you were in another state. Now, you may or may not remember the catalogs. Now, the catalogs came out. So on the right, the Toll Toys 1997 catalog, this would have been um, put out to, to toy shops and the likes of, say, Venture when they were around and Walton when they were around and Safeway and, and Kmart. Uh, the one on the left, the 1983 catalogue, uh, you can see it's got Toll Toys products in there, Parker Brothers, Pally Toy, and there's a, a, a connection with that later on, Kenner, uh, and it has the Star Wars Rangers as well. Now, this was inside of it, so you can see all the stuff that you used to get on the inside uh, that were all Toll Toys. It's obviously the Toll Toys section. Uh, and we'll be going through a fair chunk of that. Some of the things I haven't put up in the in the talk, which you may or may not remember, uh, the Etch-a-Sketch, where you could twirl the knobs however you will, and it would make pictures, and the Bug Catcher, which I had one but could never catch any bugs, um, and no yeah. crabs would not in one of those things. With an Etch-a-Sketch, there's one thing you don't want to sort of talk to a woman across the other side of the room and try and explain it, and you do this and you go like that, because that's just <laughs> be completely misinterpreted. <laughs> Move on, yeah, <laughs> so that's what some of the catalogs look like back in the day now we're going to start with some of the star wars stuff now as you can see the the logo down the very bottom right hand side of the screen which is blue which is like on the top of the screen that's toll toys so now distribution company for those who aren't aware basically bring in a product and push it out to the market so they're not manufacturing they're just bringing it in and moving it out so almost i don't know Sounds like secondhand dealing, uh, but they're just, they know the local market, so they're distributing from main source to the companies. So some of these were also distributed in such a way where they were printed over here. So boxes were printed over here and some just had stickers put on them. And you'll see there's a, a difference in some of the products uh, shortly. So that was one of the first ones that I remember as a Star Wars toy. Um, and that was plaster from, from Han in, actually the one I was looking at was Monk and Jedi. Um, just a very quick one. William still has his Etsy sketch. Oh, well done. There you oh. go. William, you've got, you've got nothing better to do, mate. Uh, sketch out the three of us dudes watching, doing this presentation. Must have very strong th fingers and preamble thumbs. Um, yep. <laughs> now, this was an interesting point I mentioned in the Star Wars talk. This is a uh, Stormtrooper blaster, uh, but it's got a picture of Luke Skywalker on it. So, and it's also got the, the back sections that you can actually lock it into your, your hip or your shoulder where they never actually did that uh, in the show. Uh, some yeah, I think, actually, right. I was thinking about the stock. I think because it, it was based on a real gun, maybe the real gun actually had the stock. And when they made the toy, they just thought, well, if it's based on the real, whatever, the Sten gun, blah, 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 whatever it is. I know some nerds out there will know this. Maybe they thought, oh, the stock will be included. But, of course, once the film came out, the stock had been removed. So maybe that's the reason why it has the stock. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe. We will never know. Indeed. Uh, painting design books. So basically you can paint your pictures of your favourite uh, characters, as we were mentioned in the Star Wars talk, the one of Vader and Stormtroopers, well, that was pretty easy, just a touch of red, a touch of blue, and next next picture. <laughs> <laughs> TIE Fighters in space, a little bit of grey, done. Done. Um, now, most people will probably remember, remember these. I had the X-Wing, and these were uh, at, the top of the, at the top of the product, it says Toll Toys in white. So Toll Toys had a range of different logos as well, like we saw at the beginning of the slides, and, and you can sort of tell. Uh, so these were produced uh, locally sort of thing because they were printed with Toll Toys on them. Action figures. Now, here's a bit of a difference. You can sort of see the Vader figure on the left has a rounded uh, oval sort of shaped Toll Toys sticker, whereas the Obi-Wan has a square one. So different uh, places put either a round sticker over what would have been the, just the whoever made it at the time or a square sticker so you can sort of see there are two different types of stickers even though we would never have noticed this back in the day now i was talking to the guys at just collectibles today oh sorry not just collectibles got them on the mind on lobo's collectibles and we were they were talking about the fact that they've got some um toll toys uh stuff in stock and i was asking about the price of some of them and certainly way over my budget, but they were telling me about this 
or a, a vinyl cape Jawa that sold recently that they sold, how's this, $65,000. Wow. So, and that's their most expensive Toll Toys uh, toy that they've sold. And that was only a, a few months ago. So it's, um, yeah, it's certainly mint on card back from the day. Uh, got a question. So Paul has said um, they're not stickers. I think, Paul, some were and some weren't. Uh, so you probably find that there were some. They did put stickers that were very, very hard to get off. They certainly weren't removal. They may not have printed all of them on. So it could be a bit of both. That's in my opinion anyway. Well, those ones, like I said, the Vader is a sticker. I can tell because there's a, a bit on the end. So I know that's a sticker. Whereas yep. those ones, it's printed. So yep. it means the yep. card were printed over here or, yep. you know, Printed close and then brought over and, and and they're all packed together, but there were stickers and there were printed. So, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, so yeah, that was the the most um, expensive uh, Toll Toys figure that was sold in recent times. There you go. Twelve inch figures. Now there's a whole history of these three were made over here or distributed over here. Then there was later on the Veda and the Chewy, which were distributed over here, but not in the States. So they became rare over there. And uh, it's just, there's a whole sort of story behind it all. Uh, we may have a, a podcast coming up in the future from with Will, who um, knows a lot more about the Toll Toys stuff uh, than I do. So we might get a clearer picture on that. But these were, again, printed uh, Toll Toys uh, packaging. And again, Beth, Beth Luke and... and uh, layer, but it wasn't until the second release that was um, Chewy and Vader. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and uh, one of our uh, regular viewers, uh, Spankin, I don't know if he's uh, watching at the moment, but he has all of them actually in their boxes. I mean, they're in various shades of condition, but they're all um, they're all complete. So uh, good on him. Yeah. Uh, uh, on. Uh, here's a question for you. Here we go, uh, dude. So the Jawa, who bought it, sold it straight away. It wasn't Aaron who did this, I don't think. <laughs> Sold it, it sold it again for 100 grand. That's just insane, isn't it? I mean, how far is too far with these things? Yeah. Well, yeah. if you can do it, why not? If someone's willing to pay, as we say, yeah. it's only worth what you're willing to pay. Yeah. Uh, now, one of Toll Toys' initial claims to fame was the introduction of and via agreement with the original manufacturers, hula hoops and frisbees to Australia in the 60s. So, for those who don't know what a frisbee looks like, there's one right there. Um, um, uh, they were promoted heavily, and Whammo uh, was the company and Toll Toys distributed them. Now, Will was telling me a story about this, about the hula hoops and how they made, uh, I think he said it was in the US, they, they made like a million, um, and then the next year they made like two million. You know, there's phenomenal numbers for these things. So, see, I wanted to get into hula hoops, but I couldn't get round to it. Ah, uh, I didn't get round to it. I just my own joke. <laughs> Here's a good one for you. What do you call a hula hoop with a naval with a nail in it? What? A naval destroyer. <laughs> That's a <laughs> naval worse. destroyer. Get it? Yeah, no. get it. Yeah. Um, do, you guys, on. do you guys remember when Big M were doing their their promotions back in the late seventies, early eighties, and they were flavored? You could smell the flavors of the hula hoops because they made them to match the Big M's. So there was a strawberry flavored one that I remember. Uh, and there was, a, well, I don't know if there's a chocolate one, but it was definitely a strawberry one. You guys remember anything like that? Uh, no, but what I did notice, we've just cracked our jokes and two people have signed off, so obviously we've got to cut the humour out. <laughs> I can't remember the flavour, but I can remember Radio 3 and P. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Nothing but the best here, Michelle. What can I say, eh? <laughs> Yeah, now she's all uh, grown once she gets the crappy Yoda toy for... Um, uh, and and uh, Paul remembers the scented ones. Scented or unscented? <laughs> yeah, if you know that movie, you're doing well in Pierce. Well, no, I'd be curious to see if anybody else does. Anyway, continue on, dude. Uh, yeah, it was Batman Returns and Penguin. Thank you very much. Very uh, so Tom Toys also distributed over here the Mego Ranger figures. Now, Mego Ranger figures, I could do a whole presentation on this. They were eight-inch figures, very articulate. Uh, head, arms, elbows, wrists, feet, all that sort of stuff. So um, you can see the logo on the bottom of the blister box uh, and it's the coloured logo. The whole logo has changed over the years for some reason. Lots of different designs and, and, and a So not just Marvel, but they brought in DC as well. So I remember having a Superman 
Mego figure as a kid, and I got a Robin later on as a, a sort of some of a whole bunch of these things out, including Star Trek and Robin Hood, and I got a whole bunch of Megos, but there was a Robin in there. I never had a Batman one. Uh, I do in the current series of Mego figures, which we showed on uh, Sci-Fi Zone last year. And you got the Super Gals, not just Super Girls, but Super Gals. They were part of the, the Toll Toys collection back then. And same with Western Heroes. There's a big discussion going on here with the talking, with everybody talking about scented hula hoops, right? Well, a few people have sort of discussed that who's had a hula, who had a scented hula hoop who didn't. I couldn't help but think that if you were a bloke and you didn't wear a shirt and you sort of just rolled it around your stomach and then you give it to somebody else and they have a bit of a whiff of that and they go, what's this scent it has? It's a scent of nerd. <laughs> <Got it down. laughs> there goes two more people watching the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, Back in back in the, in the seventies, the the six million dollar man was pretty popular, and so he uh, he was there in um, model form, action model kit form. Now, All right. away from that, so I'm, I'm going to stop you for a second. I've got a few people saying that there's an echo in the room. Um, can you? I know there's no problems at my end. Uh, are you guys, are your microphones still plugged in? Okay, your speakers okay over at your end? Can you just yeah, there's I've got four people who've picked up on it, so. Uh, can you guys just check sure. your systems at your end? Everything's okay. Nothing's been moved. You're not hitting your mics or anything. No, Speakers. I'm actually holding mine, so it's definitely not me. So hang on, holding your what? Well, I'm holding my mic so that. Uh... No, no, don't do that. Can you put the microphone on a desk, please, in front of you? Because I am hearing noises coming through, and it does sound like microphone noises. So can you put it on the table? So uh, that may have something to do with it. All right, NPS. Sorry to do that to you. Keep going. That's all right. So in 1977. Uh, 77, 1979, Toltoy's Fun Fountain. So this was a, a outdoor summer sort of thing where you stuck a hose in one end and it would blow the hat off and water would go everywhere and everyone would have a barrel load of fun out in the sun. There was also a willy willy to bike. Now this was one of those things where you, you know those, those things you stick air in at car yards and you know, that was like the dangerous toy because the, the antenna at the top would just flick around everywhere and squirt you and probably hit you in the eye if you were you know three feet tall so we got a break jeff if you need to you can come close to the camera if there's you've got concerns about your sound all right no it's okay. fine you're good okay eps keep going we go back to some of the mego figures and these were ones that i didn't realize were mego figures but they were still toll toys uh branded the fonz from happy days richie and potsy so now these look like they're stickers. If you see down underneath the jukebox, the one on, on Richie on the left is actually on an angle and the yeah. one with pot is straight. So it looks like someone's stuck it on. That's why I suggest there are some stickers with some of them. Yep. Uh, Starsky and Hutch, more action figures from the Mego range. Now we get a little bit different. These are not Mego figures as such. It's the $6 million man or the bionic man and the bionic woman. Uh, now, if that's the $6 million man I'm thinking of, you could see through his eye, which ended yep. up being a um, yeah. telescope, and she didn't do anything exciting that I recall. Action Man, uh, prior to the 12-inch, or after the 12-inch Action Man, you got the, the three and three-quarter inch Action Man, and they're, again, distributed. Uh, and these are nicely packaged ones back in the day. I think these were 70s release. So certainly different to the 80s release uh, Action Man and G.I. Joe, although some of them s look similar. They also did games, or they distributed games. Now, Star Wars uh, Escape from the Death Star. Jeffro's nodding. Did you have one of these, Jeffro? I do remember it very well. It was like one of the first um, Star Wars-related things to actually come out that you could actually own. So uh, I was probably a little bit too old for board games but i certainly remember uh, the toy shops having stacks of them so i was the perfect age for it so 10 years old 11 years old played it to death with school my schoolmates and uh had a whale of a time even though all things being equal was pretty crap <laughs> <laughs> well it seems that that crappy games weren't just star wars related uh this was a, still a good one and still around today pick up sticks if you remember the idea of pick yeah. up stick so you would stick them on a pile and let them fall and you'd have to pick oh, them up yeah. without the other ones. And if you have a look at the logo on the very right-hand side of screen, 
it's a different logo again. It's earlier than all the other logos because the, the O's are triangles and it's got a black kangaroo. So, I don't know, it looks like Skippy had a hard day at the office there. Um, the vial has pointed out that with the Fonzie figure, and I did forget about this, you press the back and the thumbs go, hey, hey, you can you know, interpret that any way you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could twist his arms around, you could get him to do the Roman Emperor, you know, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> pop checks with pop matic Now, these are from the makers of Trouble. If you remember Trouble, you had the pop matic in the middle where you pop it and the dice would turn to whatever number it was and you could move around the, the board. This is Pop Checks. I don't know how you play this thing, but another quality game from distributed from Toll Toys. Actually, it's very funny because you had uh, Trouble, which you had the board and the thing, and there was another game called Headache, and they were absolutely identical, except one, uh, the Headache one had cones, and you could actually land a cone on top of another cone. But I don't know if they were manufactured by the same company or not, but at the time, I thought, are these competing with each other? Because they were absolutely 100% exactly the same layout and the same principle, so and the same mechanism in the middle as well. It was one way yeah. you didn't lose your dice. That was one advantage of that uh, dome thing in the centre. And it certainly makes it different because you're not rolling. You don't, you know, it's not in your control what number comes up. So it is completely random. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, it's set on the side from the makers of Trouble. So they're obviously cashing in on that, uh, that fame. Yep. Yeah, why not use a problematic for everything you can? Masterpiece, the art action, or the art auction game. Just what you want, you know, some 10-year-old pretending he's an auction <laughs> guru uh, and, and trying to figure out how to bid. I think the only part of this game that would be fun would be the guy being the auctioneer with a hammer. Well... Considering I've done so many Skyforce auctions in my own time, I would start off by saying, hey, this one's never been used or abused. <laughs> then we have the Muppet Show game. So, yeah. again, uh, distributed by Toll Toys. This is what was inside of it. So you had yep. your, your characters where you could be anyone you wanted to. Uh, you had your little spin dials there. And you had a board, which I don't know what you did with it because I've never seen the game uh, I think a few people have considered this show that they're watching right now to be the Muppet Show. <laughs> <laughs> Monopoly. We all know Monopoly, and there's a billion types of Monopoly out there. But I remember this one clearly because we had this one when I was growing up, and my mother decided that instead of opening the, the, the game board all the time, that she would glue it down to a piece of wood. And, yeah, we stopped <laughs> using the, game, the Monopoly game and used the board out under it. Did you ever pick up on the, on the version that we had at, like at school and all that for many, many, many years? It was the English version with the streets, but instead of pounds, it was still dollars. So it must have been like maybe this version where they said, oh, we'll keep the English names like Bond Street and Trafalgar and all the rest of it, but use dollars instead of pounds. And when I eventually saw one that had pounds on it, I thought, oh, they've got that wrong, not realising the pounds one was technically correct. Yeah, I think yeah. you're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they just printed it differently because we're we were over here and they were using pounds and we weren't. Um, now I don't know if he's referring to us on this one, but Kelvin said two old guys and fuzzy bears. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the old guys, I think. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, now these were cool. I had these. They're train. They're a train set, and yes. they came with red tracks or blue tracks. And they were called the guide, or the child guidance railway system. Now I don't remember the box necessarily, but I remember having all that sort of stuff, you know. And you would pick them up from wherever later on, you know. You would just get tracks, get trains, and and this was a great thing. And I saw one of these recently because my sister runs an op shop, and this was in her store. And if she's listening, and I know she is, uh, can you grab it for me if it's still in the store, please? <laughs> And while you're at it, Susie, can you go down the street and get me some, uh, like, like Krispy Kreme donuts or something? <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> Smash Up Derby. This was one for the boys, I think, mostly. This was, you know, two cars, lots of damage. What more could you want? So you have two cars, the zip line, and parts that fly off, and I think a couple of ramps there, and you would just go to town. 
I like what you said. What more could you want? Uh, how about the parts that fly off attached by a string? Because when they smashed, it was just bits went everywhere, and you go, yeah, where did it, it's all gone. <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> so there you go. That's um, That would have been more for the boys. Um, the dude, also, bad news for you, dude. Sold, yeah. sold, 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 sold. It's gone, skis, mate. So you're out of luck. So there you go. Thanks, Zeus. That's that's all I wanted. Just thanks for ruining my day. Um, <laughs> slot car so set. Too. Now, this this is a classic slot car set, obviously distributed by Tall Toys. You can see it clearly down the bottom. It was called Quick Slot. Now, if you have a look on the right, it's the Holden Tirana edition. Oh. And yeah. this particular pack looks completely brand spanking new on the inside. The, the thing is, when I was putting these together, I looked at the orange car and I looked at the white car and I went, those Duke boys are up to something no good because it just <laughs> looks like <a> bully. <laughs> the cops are coming after them. So that's how I, I would turn turn the Tiranas into the General Lee and, and uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane and just chase each other. You know what the tragic thing is? I've not seen this photograph in 40 years and I actually had that. I got it as, as a Christmas in 1975 or something if we're talking about the same set. And it was like the greatest thing in the universe, this figure eight thing. And, oh, it was grouse. Yeah. Yeah, wow. slot car sets are always fun. But I couldn't believe it was a Holden Tirana one. So specifically, not just, you know, Holden versus Ford, but it was Holden Tirana mm. as, as its own. Creepy critters. I remember these when I was at school. This was sort of teaching you how to put legs onto bugs and rip them off, but it was also teaching you how to count so you could have four legs or six legs or eight legs or whatever the case was. Um, and Will was telling me today that he knows a guy that's got all of the sets of these, apparently, and there was more than just the one. So I guess he needs the bug catcher as well. Yeah, the old bug catcher. Yeah, you capture, capture uh, little aliens in there and just keep them until they die. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Oh, Stretch Armstrong. How grouse Stretch is that? Armstrong. Yes. Now, there have been plenty of versions of Stretch Armstrong over the years, but the original is still the best. Uh, there's currently a Batman version of Big W for like 30 bucks, and they've done wrestlers in the last couple of years. But Stretch Armstrong, go on, dude. I had a mate of mine had one of these. And we're in our place, and we said, We'll just see how far we can go. <laughs> and I stood at the top of the stairs in the house that we're in, and he went down, and it got stretched and stretched. And you swear you're waiting for it to snap and go, Pew! and I tell you what, he had a lot of resistance. He could, you could stretch him a long way. Oh, it's impressive. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, you could stretch it up to seven feet, and that's because of the corn syrup that was inside of it. So it um, has that, that uh, memory to go back into its shape. Now, how's this? Aaron's called me a creepy critter. My other nickname, that's just charming, Aaron. Yeah, good on your son. So there you go. <laughs> what you two talk in private is is none of our business. So yeah. move along. Yeah, yeah, what happens in the nerdy show stays in the nerdy show. Exactly right. Yeah. <clears throat> now, the Kenner Company licensed Pally Toy, and we mentioned that very early in the starters with the history in England, uh, and Toll Toys in Australia just settled Life Dogs. Now, these, was, these were out for one year, apparently, and back in the day, they were seen upon as like creepy looking dolls well you can make your mind up as to whether they look creepy or not but this was the range of blythe dolls and apparently still today they go for quite some dollars they look like spy schools actually an early version of them like preempting the spy schools yeah they sort of do they look like 60s sort of um runway model type type dolls but they also got the bobblehead sort of feel to them big heads tiny little yep. bodies so because if you pull the string on the back, it goes, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one goes, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. And that's all it says. Now, not forgetting the girls again, Cabbage Patch Dolls were told toys released. This shocked me a little bit because I wasn't sure of this. I remember my sister getting one of these as a child because my mother decided that it was funny, not just talking about Cabbage Patch Dolls, but actually putting her in the, our grandparents' Cabbage Patch at the time in the garden. Uh, I'm sure there's a photo of that somewhere, and I might have to dig it up for the end of sh end of year show. Uh, now, here was one that was um, uh, marketed by Bert Newton, apparently. So what happened was Bert went on Qantas with one of these dolls and did advertising for it back in the day. This is Jenny, the jet-setting Qantas air hostess. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tongue twister if you ever want to try <laughs> one. Now, if you have a look at Jenny... She is not the prettiest uh, girl in, 
going through the Qantas air crew. So, yeah, I think this was the Australian version of Barbie, which was doing great guns at the time. And I think this was a 70s release from what I was told. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. <laughs> All I can see there is the second one in, in the line after the hula hoop it looks like Bindi Irwin. Um, now, this was a toy that I do remember seeing around, but I never got, and it was called Flashback 100. So basically, it was like a little tabletop pinball machine. The two black pieces on either side, you would pull back, shoot a ball bearing up and around, it would hit the ramp, and then go into one of the spots. Um, similar to, oh, what are they called, a time zone, where you get the ball and you roll it up the, the thing and it pops in. Um, I've gone blank on what that's called, but similar to those. This was obviously a very small little tabletop game. Ghost Gun. Now, this was an interesting one. Apparently, this goes for a lot of dollars oh, if you put it on this still in box. And this was a very good, clear picture that I could find online. Sorry, Jeffrey, you got one or you had one? Yeah, I had one as a kid. Uh, yeah, that was so much fun. Yeah. And you can actually sh uh, target the uh, image and, and shoot it. I, don't, I can't remember too much, but uh, I do remember there was like it came with about four different slides and you, you sort of had to shoot at the, uh, the target. Yeah. And the reason you did that, it was because you ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so there you go. If you could have just had two of those and not cross the streams, you could have been your own <laughs> 70s Ghostbusters before the Ghostbusters. Really? So it's still a very cool toy by the looks of it. You know, you probably pre-LED light, obviously. But, um, yeah, it still looks very cool. Then there was the Merlin, the Electronic oh, Wizard. This was yes, a very cool handheld device well if you had one jeffro explain to us what it did uh again you're talking about something that um was going back way but i think you had to sort of uh, it was a bit like simon i think you had to sort of press the buttons in a certain sequence but uh i definitely uh, remember having one of these yeah so it was a small device about oh, i don't know eight to twelve inches probably in length yeah. And you had yeah. to press the buttons and then follow the patterns later on. So, yeah, it looks like an, a, a futuristic telephone, though. Yeah, a few people had one. Colin had one. Uh, Kelvin had one. And I'm not surprising, I guess, William had one as well. So uh, there you go. A few people had the old Merlin. Very good. Oh, hang on, hang on. If, if William had one and Kelvin had one, did they only just have the one or did they have two? <laughs> one at each end of the, of the thing, yeah. <laughs> Barrel O monkeys, as they're called, or barrel of monkeys back in the day. So you yep. remember what you did these? You had a monkey, you hooked the next one, you hooked the next one, you see how far you could get. And guess what? It was a barrel O fun. It so Tolstoy distributed barrel of monkeys. And if you had more than one barrel, oh boy, did that become more fun. That is a shitload of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and going is back to what we talked monkeys? about in the spot. Sorry, Jeffrey. Is there 12 monkeys? Yeah, uh, actually, there's that's that's a Guinness Book of World Records. You need to like get five hundred million of these freaking monkeys, put them in a beer keg, and just <laughs> try try and reach them up into the sky or the hot air balloon, and just have more lean down to the ground. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not surprised if it would be done though, because that just wouldn't shock me at all. But yeah, probably not. Yeah. Who, who knows? We'll have to check it out. And the last one we've got here, which is an interesting one. Dude, have you ever seen one of these? It's, it was actually manufactured by Toll Toys. It was Australian original in 1966, uh, and it was called a triple dart gun. Now, as you can see from the middle picture, it looks like a bat with three different pieces. On the side, it actually has a trigger mechanism down the bottom where it is the gun function, and you put darts in there and basically shoot the darts out. I've never seen one live. Have you? I can't remember. I may have. The logo looks very familiar. Uh, if I did, it would have been in like a collectible store somewhere loose, but that would have been a very long time ago, so I can't say either way. Yeah. So I don't know much about this, but these are around uh, still, but I don't know if this is an eBay product. Someone had this on eBay in recent time, um, and you can find a lot of this stuff on eBay. And actually, <laughs> believe it or not, I found a few on eBay. <laughs> so... As Colin has said, if you do it a barrel of monkeys and you sort of drop one off or they all fall off, that's when you kind of spank the monkey. <laughs> I killed out myself. I shouldn't do it. <laughs> bad monkey. Bad, 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 bad. Uh, bad dags putting that in. That's a, This is a children's show. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Michelle. Ew. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. It's our third oh, last. Third, hang on, sorry. Third last show. It's bad. Oh. Uh. 
Just wait till we do the X-rated one after the last show because that'll be after yeah. hours and just let Adults loose. only version, yeah. Uh, and that comment. is it from Toll Toys. Uh, that is very well done. Good, good work. Uh, round of applause as always for MPS. All right, good stuff. Uh, we are going to be buzzing off. Go outside. You can go out inside and enjoy the wonderful one night we've got out here with the temperature and all the rest. It's absolutely lovely. We are going to buzz off. And as always, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay, see you next week. See you guys. Bye.